So welcome to uh, Leveling Up on Building Forms. I'm uh, Jonathan Perlman. Uh, you can find my slides, by the way, at uh, jpuffman.ca. And uh, that's where these slides are going to be. Um, I am Canadian. I'm from Montreal, Quebec. Uh, sorry? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. J. Purpleman. And then Purple and Color Man. .ca. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Canadian. I'm a senior web, web developer at Dawson College. Uh, Dawson College is a higher education institution. 10,000 students, uh, 1,000 faculty and staff. Uh, I'm also a teacher at the, at the college. I teach non credit. I teach essentially WordPress and I teach uh, web development and uh, databases and all the fun stuff that, I, that we do during the, our daytimes. Also, I speak at work camps with uh, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, uh, Rochester, Portland before, and so on. So why do we need to create a form? Well, uh, there's a few things why we need to create forms. Uh, we need to apply for things. I've got 12,000 applications for Dawson College, so that's all through a very complicated form. Uh, people register for events. Well, we've got events across the college, across the campus, uh, registering for like, you know, um, somebody wants to have a track race. Well, that's an event. People need to register for that. Um, capturing leads. Well, what happens is that uh, non credit uh, division, they've got classes, but not all of them are running. So they're, therefore, they want to capture interest in classes that are not running at the time that's considered a lead. So that means they can capture the interest and then contact them then down the road when the class is available. Uh, generating content from users, well, what happens is that with certain departments, we get our, our graduates to submit content to the department through a form. And then from that form, from that submission, we actually can create pages of the gra for the graduate and say, okay, basically highlighting what the graduate has done over time. And uh, yes, actually, even in higher education, we can sell things and we can take in money for products. We're, uh, we're selling, uh, what are we selling? We're selling um, uh, it's sort of like YMCA memberships, but not. We're selling basically uh, memberships to our campus recreation. So we're definitely taking in money for uh, for services and uh, those are the through a form also good way. So that's, uh, this is just a one example of a registration where they're registering for an event. Uh, we can take in their name, their email address, a phone number to contact them back at. Um, capturing leads, well here's our waiting list form for the Center for Training and Development for basically for non-credits. Uh, again, name, email address, phone number, which course are you interested in taking down the road. And here is user-generated content. So what happens is that this person, Alex, he submitted his own information, gave us a couple of pictures, gave us some YouTube links, and this page got created based on that submission. So uh, to generate forms, there's a whole slew of different tools out there. And as we go into 2018, 2019, even more tools are coming on the scene. So the first tool, not that I'm a, um, not that I'm a fan of Jetpack, um, but yes, Jetpack actually has a form creation tool built in. So if you're using WordPress.com, uh, Jetpack is uh, the features of WordPress.com on self-hosted websites. So that means you could be using Jetpack, and then you have a very simple contact form. So that, that is one option for you. Um, if you want something a bit more uh, advanced, a bit more uh, customizable, well, you can go with Contact Form 7. But here's the thing, I don't recommend it, only because of the fact that nowadays everything is drag and drop, point and click. Contact Form 7 isn't drag and drop. It's very code based. It's very, co it's very HTML and code based. So at that point, um, it's not exactly useful for the fate of art. Um, there are mainly two or three form plugins that I do recommend in terms of drag and drop ability. Ninja Forms is one. It's one of the one of the longer, uh, more established form companies that has been doing forms. They've got a very drag and drop interface. You, well, I'm going to talk about fields in a moment. But basically, you take to the field, you drag and drop, you save. There's your form. Thank you very much. Uh, within the field itself, you just click the field, click the name field, and you've got a whole slew of buttons, a whole slew of, tech of options that you can customize on the name field per se. 
Now the thing with Ninja Forms is that it's got its base plugin is free. You're going to find Ninja Forms in the WordPress.org uh, uh, plugin directory. No problem. You've got a lot of good functionality for free. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, at that point, when you want to get into more complicated things, that's where they're going to want some money. That's where you have to buy an add-on. An add-on is essentially extra functionality for Ninja Forms. But you're not going to get it for free. You need to pay for these add-ons, uh, which at that point, with Ninja Forms as um, an app, with all their add-ons, it is going to get expensive down the road. If you need a lot of different add-ons, it might be better off to go with a different plugin solution. So there's a whole slew of add-ons. These are just well, nine of them. Um, where front-end posting is an example. Front-end posting is basically the creation of the, of the pages. Multi-part forms, multi-part forms. We're going to talk about it to basically multi-page forms. Uh, if you want to take money with the forms, Stripe, PayPal, you got you to pay money for that. File uploads. If you want people to upload files to you, you got to pay for that. So they're basically nickel and diming you, which is not a bad thing, because if you only need to take in name, phone number, credit card number, Stripe or PayPal. End of story. You're done. So ultimately, one plugin might suffice your need. But if you need to do multi-page plus conditional logic plus taking in money plus formats and uh, front-end posting, it might get expensive. So it depends on what you need to do with your forms. Now, another uh, big player in the forms market is Gravity Forms. Now, Gravity Forms is um, it's a it's a bigger plugin. To begin with, you're not going to find it in the plugin repository because it's a paid plugin. Now, is a paid plugin better? Yes and no. Again, depends on what you need to do. Um, because Ninja Form, Gravity Forms, Gravity Forms gives you the same kind of functionality, drag and drop. You create all your forms, you create all your, um, all your fields through a very intuitive point and click interface. It's a well established company, it's been doing it for years. Um, what happens is that you can definitely pay, um, it's a low cost of entry with premium features. So what happens is that you pay, uh, I don't remember the pricing these days, but last I checked it was less than a hundred bucks and you're getting a lot of complicated features for one price. It is definitely very useful if you're going to do multiple, um, multiple forms and on top of that it's going to be very useful if you have a very complicated process. Um, with your form. It's got a very large user base, and on top of that, they've got extensive documentation. Uh, if you're a developer in the room, what happens is that there's also very extensive hook and filter uh, features. So you can do a lot of different things. You can push and pull with the gravity forms, with all that data internally. Now, because of time, I'm going to focus on gravity forms just because I can't focus on the same features in three different form plugins. So, in terms of what we're going to talk about right now, we're talking based on gravity forms. So, field options. What kind of field options do you want to, can you use on your forms? What do these field options mean to you? So, the thing is, you've got single line text fields. Single line text fields are basically your de facto standard in fields. A name field, a phone number field, a email address field, single line text. Okay? Paragraph text, though, is if you want to take in a, a block of text, user comments, a message, you know, multi-paragraphs, that's essentially what the paragraph text field would be. Uh, Dropdowns. So you've got multiple options, and the person has to click into it, and it drops down. Well, that's your drop-down field. Uh, Gravity Forms gives you a number field, and then in that number field, what happens is that it allows you to only enter numbers. Let's say you're requesting an age from a person. Well, that age is not going to be characters. It's not going to be letters. So at that point, the number field locks down so that you can only type in numbers into that box. Uh, check boxes and multiple choice are similar yet different. Uh, essentially, it's check boxes or radio buttons. Uh, it'll, it's, a, it's similar to drop downs where it gives the user a selection of options, but either it's check one of many, or check all that apply. So let's say, for example, you're doing an RSVP form for a wedding, 
what happens at that point is you want person, a person to check, do they want chicken, fish, or beef? One of the three, not all. That's essentially um, a radio button or multiple choice, where they can only choose one. But then if you want something whereby somebody's going to give you their opinion on different categories, and you want it to apply to many options, that's check boxes. Um, hidden fields are very powerful. Hidden fields are basically fields on the form which you technically can't see. They are there, but they're not visible to the normal person. They, uh, you can get to them from code, you can get to them from um, different ways, but it's generally a field that you're not supposed to see. <coughs> um, an HTML field is actually not really a field, it's basically us having the ability to put in whatever HTML we want into the form. Basically, we can put in a whole block of style as text, a whole block of, um, of really anything, and um, you can basically put in information into your form. Um, now, if these, the section page break features give you more functionality where you can then section off your fields. You can put your fields, your, your, your form fields into logical groupings. So you're basically asking people to put in, let's say, all the stuff about themselves, and then at that point in another section, they can put in, let's say, their credit card information. So that's two different sections. That could be two different sections. Um, and page breaks work similarly, where you can essentially make them go to a different page to fill in the rest of the form, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Uh, within gravity forms, similarly like in Ninja forms, You've got extra advanced fields, so what they do is they kind of make it a lot easier to fill in those, um, those complicated fields like name, whereby name could really be first name, last name, could be the prefix, could be the suffix. You can turn those on, turn those off. So instead of you adding five boxes for the name, well, you just have to add in one field and there you go. Uh, date time is a specific field that you might want to use so that people have the ability to use a, uh, a date picker. They pick a date from a calendar, and then you get the date in the format that you want. Uh, phone number and address. Well, phone number is basically a field in Gravity Forms that allows you the ability to show in the North American standard of phone number, where it'll, it'll automatically put in brackets and put it in the dash, and people just type their numbers. Um, there is also the, the address field, and the address field basically allows you the ability to put in a North American standard address and gives you all the fields needed for that. Um, so you don't have to put in five or six different fields. It, here is just one shot, here's your address, thank you very much. Question me back. Sometimes when you're in the United States, and I don't mean to sound uh, spoiled, but it, it will be, the United States will be at the very end yep. of the Dropbox. Yep. Is, there, is there a way to yep. have the functionality yep. lead with the United yep. States? Yep. Okay. What happens is that the, the, the question basically was, uh, in the U.S., uh, the, in the U.S., uh, because of the fact that the United States is, is essentially uh, with a U, an you know, and, and if you sort alphabetically, the United States at the bottom, is there functionality that you can move it all the way to the top? Uh, actually, yes, you can. You can definitely, it'll give you a preset list, and you can then change the preset list after the fact. Um, same thing for Canada, for the record. Uh, I always have to hit C like two or three times to get to from Cambodia to <laughs> Canada. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it would be, it is a good thing if you can give your users the ability to mod modify that list. You can also uh, the website, well, mistake. websites at that point okay. uh, allows people to type in web addresses. So it'll do a little bit of detection on the, on the format of the web address. Uh, email, same thing. It'll, it'll basically, for validation purposes, it'll try to check to see if the email is in the right format. It won't check to see if the email exists. It'll just check to see if it's, in, if it's got all the bells and whistles, like the add sign and the period. Um, file uploads, this is a very complicated field, file upload, with a lot of potential security ramifications. So what happens is that with the file upload field, you can actually upload documents to your server, to your site. Um, and that is built in, by the way, none, uh, to Gravity Forms. You don't have to get an add-on to that. Uh, and then CAPTCHA is another kind of field that you can invoke 
with Google, uh, Google reCAPTCHA, which essentially is a, an alternate level of slam, spam blocking. So uh, spam blocking is essentially required because you're, if you weren't into the security talks in the, in the morning, spam can get into your, into your form. Basically, bots out there, random um, scripts out there are just basically hammering your forms and trying to submit information. This is all automated. Questions? Yeah, there's a you know a lot of information that you can collect and a lot of obviously in these fields. Yes. So a lot of these builders have uh, add-ons or um, features that allow you to basically manage manage your leads or man you know manage your database. Good so question. Forth. I'm going to talk about that after. The question was with all the form builders add-ons, is there any lead management capabilities? Absolutely. I'm talking about that later. So, um, in terms of collecting the data, helping the person enter the information. Uh, this is actually a, a screenshot of forms whereby you've got sections. So uh, it may not be completely readable in the back. I do apologize for that. But basically, it gives you titles for a category, for a whole set of fields. That would be considered a section. And then you can put in stuff. Um, uh, you put the fields into grouping. So the first group is the About You group. And in the about you group, you're giving the name, you're giving the email address, and then at that point, after the next section is what's on your mind, and then what's on your mind is essentially two fields, where you can put it, the user can put in a whole paragraph of what's on their mind, and then then here's that recapture which I was talking about before. Question. Um, where does the data go when you get submitted? The data goes into the database. It goes into the WordPress database, and at that point, we can then manage those uh, entries after the fact. So, um, in terms of layout, what happens is that you can actually control the layout to a certain degree. There are tools in there, and there's features in Gravity Forms and Ninja Forms to help you create multiple columns of fields. Um, having the columns in multiple, sometimes having columns in multiple fields, having the fields, sorry, sometimes having fields in multiple columns is actually better for the user. But be careful because at that point sometimes it's not. Sometimes people are going to get confused of jumping from left to right, left to right. Sometimes having a call one column down is better off. So it depends again on the form that is being put towards the users. Um, <clears throat> conditional logic. This is a very, very useful tool for form builders. What happens is that conditional logic. Essentially, in gravity forms, yes, could be applied to a field, a section, and submit by them. So, essentially, here's the thing. So, with the form, imagine you're saying, um, here, let me just go to the next one. Basically, you're saying, at Dawson, we have the, <clears throat> we have a situation in, in Montreal and Quebec <laughs> that a lot of our students are coming from high school. Most of our students are coming from high school. They're not coming internationally. Now, I realize in other scenarios, other schools, they really rely on those internationals. But we don't. We don't need them. And it just adds work and, and the process to us that we kind of don't want. Therefore, we have a form. We have a very open form where basically anybody can ask a question. And um, we ask, are, they an, are you an international student? Right off the bat, if you're an international student, there's conditional logic in place that says, okay, here's some text. Have you tried going to our international students page for all of to answer to all the questions that you're gonna have? All those answers are over there. So essentially the form almost I wouldn't say shuts down, but it gives them helpful tips and hints based on the fact that they're international. If they click any other choice, they don't see the whole thing about international. So essentially, if you've seen on forms before, if you apply to this category, then fill out this field. It's something like that. Whereby now, with gravity forms and ninja forms and conditional logic, you can then test, have you applied, yes or no. If you've applied, then you show them a whole series of fields. If they haven't applied, well, then at that point, they don't need to see the fields. So sometimes, less fields are more. Because at that point, you're not showing them fields, they don't have to enter. <clears throat> another, another way to do conditional logic is essentially if you're doing multi, um, if you have a big sales team, a big, big billing team, or department team, or support team, 
you can then tailor the form so that if they're contacting sales, well, it's essentially subject and message. But if they're trying to contact customer service, well, at that point, have you submitted a trouble ticket, yes or no? If you have, then the trouble ticket number field comes up, and then you can submit the subject and message. So all that is essentially conditional logic, conditionally showing fields, conditionally showing sections, conditionally showing pages is all feasible. And for the record, on top of that, conditionally showing the final submit button. So if they haven't filled out all the fields, you can then hide that submit button. Now, multi-page forms is another way to help the user, actually, because what happens with multi-page fields, they're going to go through a process. They're going to go through, let's say, a four-step process in my, in my demo here, whereby they're showing, we're showing them information to enter about themselves, they hit next, then it's their address, they hit next, or they can go previous, they can go back and change information they entered before. Then, then they hit next again after entering their address, they, they can act, enter now what is their message and who they want to send it to, the support department, the sales department. What this basically does for you is that it gives you, gives the user less to focus on in one, at one time. It doesn't overwhelm the user. So what happens is that with multi-page forms, it actually makes the process easier to fill out because they can then focus on the fields that they're showing you and then move on to the next. And then of course at the end, if you want, you can have a terms of service and they can agree to the terms of service. Uh, nowadays on top of that, we have to be asking for privacy information. We have to ask them if they consent to giving us our email address. We have to tell them that they're, um, the, the, there's a whole thing with uh, GDPR with, whereby it's an entire law on uh, using the uh, email address for marketing purposes. So this entire form, you saw four pages, but it could have been a very, very long page to fill out. Very daunting for the user. Um, in terms of restricting access, you can actually restrict access within Gravity Forms to your forms. And why would you want to restrict access? Because ultimately you want as many people as you want filling out the forms. Wait a second, not really. Because forms like a registration form for WordCamp, there's only so many spots at a WordCamp. There's only so many spots at uh, an event, as an example. So yes, you can disable the form based on the number of submissions. And also on top of that, you can disable the form based on the date and time. Why would somebody want to, want to register for WordCamp tomorrow? A little, bit, a little bit out of the question because WordCamp is today, it's not happening tomorrow. So you want to shut down the form. There are going to be situations where you want to shut down the form at a specific date and time because the event is over and the form is no longer required. Now for the developers in the room, there is also a hook. Uh, there's a whole slew of hooks in Gravity Forms where you can interact with third-party data, you can send data to third parties, you can do a whole slew of different things with the hooks, hooks and filters. Um, now, after submit, okay, after, after somebody hits submit, what do they see, what do they get, what happens? Well, ultimately, they should see something on their screen. Okay, they should see some text, thank you for your submission of the form, um, ultimately, it would be also a good thing that you email the information to them to say thank you also by email, that you receive the form and that you're going to get back to them in a certain time frame or this is the next step to the, that process you filled out and so on and so forth. Now speaking, so this is confirmations in, in Gravity Form Speak where it's essentially on screen right after submission and notifications are basically emails to the person, and also on top of that to the administrator. So this is the email that the administrator would get, the person managing the form. They get all the details, no problem. But the per real person filling out the form can get a very um, very plain, simple form, uh, email saying, um, you know, in this case, thank you for submission, and we look forward to seeing you at a certain date and time. Don't forget to bring this, don't forget to bring that. So, um, so sending emails from forms is a good um, a good measure of the form because then you're then re you're <clears throat> you're reinforcing that relationship between you and the 
the client or you and the person filling out the form. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about email and sending email from forms. Uh, there's a when you're sending email from forms, okay, it's using the basic WordPress email features, which is then at that point relying on the host sending your email. So there's been a lot of situations whereby, and I've heard this, that emails don't go out. This is not a problem of the form itself, it's not a problem of WordPress, it's at the hosting level. So if you're not sending emails out because of these form submissions, it's not it's not routed forms, it's not WordPress, well generally it's not. It's generally not the technology, it's more at the host level. Because of the nature of how hosts are set up and how email is being generated, what will happen is that if one site gets compromised on a, on a shared host, ultimately they all get compromised. So if one site gets compromised, there's an IP address that gets blacklisted. If your site is on that server with that IP address, you're going to get blacklisted too. So as another way to send email, what you could do is that there's services, there's plugins out there that you can use with your form and with your WordPress install to ensure that email goes out through a third party service. Another service is going to send out that email. Not your WordPress website, not your web host. So you might want to look into that if you're relying on those emails running out. Now, in terms of database management, what happens is that there's a whole slew of database. Uh, so when the form goes, when the form submission gets entered, then at that point you can log into your WordPress backend and you can see a whole list of entries in your Gravity forms, or Ninja forms for that matter. So yes, you can definitely see the entries, you can definitely uh, resubmit those notifications, you can re-email yourself, re-email people, not a problem. Uh, ultimately you can delete those entries down the road, uh, yeah, and of course, you can export those entries from Gravity Forms into a CSV, which at that point you can even, you can then import that into Excel or import that into any other system that you want. So, does that answer your data management questions? So far, so good. Almost. Almost. Okay. Well, we're, we will have time for questions, so I'll answer your question after the fact. So with Gravity Forms, there's also resources. There's a whole slew of resources. Um, and you've got documentation online about all the hooks, all the features, getting started. You definitely, there's a whole slew of that stuff there. Um, there's also another, um, what, the gra what, the, uh, what the Gravity Forms company has done is that they've not let, sorry, they've allowed their people to do side things. So this company, this uh, GravityWiz, is actually by the company that does Gravity Forms. So one developer from Gravity Forms is behind this, this site, which means it's completely reliable, completely legit, and I've found the best information that I can, uh, that I can find off this, better than I find the, the docs. Um, and this is part of that information that I find that's really good, is that they've got a hook reference. So if you're a developer, you want to know at what point when those hooks fire off. This is a really good tool to use to see at what point when those hooks and filters are firing. So at this point, we definitely have time for questions. We've got a good ten minute, a good nine minutes for questions. I do want to open the floor up. So in terms of asking, so you had a question about uh, data entry and management. Mostly where where it goes. So you said there's like another gravity form screen you can go to pull the data off. Is there a way to email a form like looking thing to somebody? So well, here's the thing. So in terms of emailing a form off looking thing, um, so as you see here, there is a way to export the data for one. So you as a person controlling the form, you're going to see a list of entries in the WordPress backend. Log into your WordPress backend. You've got a forms button on the left, uh, and then in within the forms button, you've got entries. In the entries, you're going to see a whole list of your entries of all the form submissions, and then on, on, that, and on top of that, you can export all that data to CSV to essentially Excel. But it's manual. At that point, it's a manual thing. Now, what you can also do is with all these notifications, this is actually going into your email. So by default, it emails the administrator of the site, 
And this is your default email to the administrator after every single form submission. Okay, so you can have all, all fields from the form no going problem. to the email. No okay. problem. Okay. Yeah, no problem. You can definitely have all okay. fields. You can definitely have all fields going into an email. And this, by the way, is default. This actually, you don't have to even set up. It's already there when the form gets created. All right. Question over there, yeah? Yeah, you initially had mentioned hidden fields. Can you give yeah. me an example of what that is and why I use those? Okay, so hidden fields basically allow you the ability to pull data from other systems. So what happens is that I'm pulling data, um, I'm pulling data from uh, another student information system. So what will happen is that I, I create a hidden field on the form. In fact, here, to tell you the truth, Canadian Masters. So I'm basically using hidden fields to pull data from WordPress or somewhere else for that matter. I'm putting that data, that, that in this case, this text, I'm putting it into a hidden field. And then at that point, it goes to the, it goes into the field, which means it goes to the form submission, which means the, the administrator sees this person registered for that event. So I've got one form for the event, but I can have many events that this form applies to. So instead of, so if I have 20 events, I don't need to create 20 forms for registration. I can create one. Thank you very much. So the point is basically grabbing the data of the page it's on, and knowing what page it's on means it knows what, a, what event it is, and then dumps that into the form, therefore the administrator gets that information. So I, so I create one form for 20 events. Could you also do that with like tracking? Like... Not a problem. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. Do you have, do you have a plugin that you recommend for the emails? Do have a plugin that I recommend for the emails? I don't, only because I've got, my hosting is uh, control hosting. Okay. I don't host with share hosts. So I've got a very, I've got a very tight a system for, uh, for hosting. Uh, but in terms of third party solutions, SendGrid is one of them. <coughs> Mailgun is another one that I know of. So SendGrid or Mail SendGrid or Mailgun. There's also a plugin you can use to test whether your emails are getting going. Absolutely, out. yes, definitely. Get what it's called, but but you can you know kind of work with someone to get it working. But on top of that what you can do is that instead of using testing plugins which just means one more plugin to worry about, for the record. You can then, actually, if you fill out the submission yourself, you'll know whether the emails are coming out or not. You can send the email to yourself. Not a problem. Okay? <laughs> question about the... I won't be last. Yeah, question in the back. Um, no, it's not a question, it's just a statement. Sometimes with Gravity Forms, I've had this problem a lot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just sending it to like a Gmail account uh -huh. instead of the same address as your website oh, okay, fixes yeah. that problem. So the thing is, yeah, so, so the statement was basically the fact that sometimes sending it to your website address, so, uh, so info at something.com, it might be uh, might be actually well received if you, maybe actually there's, there's a feature where you can BCC in the Gravity form, you can BCC those emails and you can send that off to a Gmail address. And therefore Gmail, if you send it off to Gmail, it's got different rules on how those emails are being received and ultimately different spam filtering is applied. So that kind of, that's actually not a bad idea to send it off to another address as a fallback. But as a third level fallback, remember, you have access to the WordPress backend, which has access to all the entries in the list. You will never, you will never lose ultimately that data because WordPress is open source and you have full control of the data. Okay. Oh yeah, you got a question. Um, is it, uh, are, is gravity, are gravity forms accessible? Gravity forms, is gravity forms accessible? That's a very good question in this, uh, in 2018. Gravity forms is accessible, and they're working on it making it even more accessible. Um, there is another plugin that you can install to make it, uh, gravity forms 2.0, to make it to WK 2.0 accessible. Uh, because what happens is that by default, it doesn't do a few things that is required by 2.0. So there is actually a plugin out there in the plugin, the plugin directory that enhances the accessibility. Is that one free? That is free. That is definitely free. Does Gravity Forms do anything for GDPR? Does Gravity Forms do anything for GDPR? At this point in time, today, 
they have actually a blog post uh, highlighting their new version, 2.4, and they do have um, a rule, they do have features in the upcoming release of 2.4 that is addressing GDPR in terms of a consent field, in terms of data protection, and also um, whether, you, whether you store the data or don't store the data. But absolutely, not a problem. Now that's a very good question related to GDPR. Uh, because um, you've got to be concerned about how long you store the data in, in your gravity forms, in your important factory forms as a whole. Uh, how long you store the data, what you store, are you anonymizing your IPs and whatnot, and making sure that you're not making everything at all accessible. All right, I think that's it. So, thank you. Lunches and our results, and we'll get ourselves to that other moment. Uh,